So, hello everybody and back to the panel discussion, are robo-bankers on our doorstep? <laughs> and um, so I know the title is a bit provocative, might okay. be. And uh, first of all, we would like to introduce the round. So also myself, so I'm Mario Anno, CEO and founder of Quantargo. We're offering data science education and consulting and as well as um, online services and our goal is to involve and include as many people as possible to this data science journey we are seeing right now and as you know also the financial industry got through a big change and this change already started a few years ago and it's ongoing, maybe even more due, during the Corona crisis. And I'm very happy to also welcome Georg Kühldorfer, who is program man manager at the Advanced Analytics Tribe at Raiffeisen Bank International, as well as Alexander Eisel, who was formerly at uh, the Vienna University of Economics and is now a co-founder of Incredible, a startup in the fintech industry and also head of or CEO of the Austrian blockchain center. So very involved also with crypto and blockchains. So very happy to have you here. And um, maybe I also start, so since my background is also quite finance or banking based, I was previously at hedge funds and also banks. So uh, what I saw actually the last years was that the banking industry, especially after the 2008 crisis, um, was just, you know, heavily involved with regulatory issues and so on. And then a few years back, everybody started to hit on the new um, AI or data science train. So this was just actually quite came quite fast and so my first question to you two maybe Georg we start with you is why is it actually important to for banks uh, to implement AI and data science or um, what you, would you miss if you wouldn't do that so uh, hello from uh, on my side thank you uh, that I can join uh discussion this discussion um yeah why is it happy to to join uh the ai direction yeah or why to go into this or why to invest into data science in fact yeah i mean as a as a bank yeah i would say we are currently in a quite um, big change i would say traditional banking as we know it the, the financial industry as we know it uh does not uh, exist any anymore or it will it will change yeah so we have i would say the big players um joining maybe the banking industry we have already the fintechs who are uh, investing here a lot and they don't have uh, such a legacy as as we have uh, like uh, host systems and uh, um you know very old uh, it landscape so now it is the time as a bank uh, like we are in rbi or in raiffeisen to invest here uh substantially in order to yeah cope with the challenges uh of of the future and the fintechs yeah i mean what what we are doing a simple example is yeah who uh was at the as a at the branch in the last time yeah so i mean when you go to the branch as uh you typically don't do it anymore. There are long queues. Yeah, you can do. I would say most of your uh, retail banking you can do from your mobile app, or you can do via your uh, a browser. So there, this this whole digital banking or the whole banking is, I would say, moving towards the um, towards the di di digital channels. Yeah, and here uh, I would say a lot goes into the direction of uh, uh, AI, and this is the advising for example of of customers here yeah, or to 
uh, offer here a, a fast, uh, let's say, or offer here fast answers to, to customers. So typically example where um, we invest a lot is currently the topic of uh, chatbots. Yeah? So where we want, uh, I would say for simple and uh, easy cases, advise the customer via a chatbot. And then if it, let's say, becomes uh, complicated, for sure, handover to a real person uh, is taking place. But uh, as long as it is, uh, uh, these are, I would say, simple uh, questions, here it makes sense yeah, to have a chatbot and have here an AI model trained um, Thank to you. offer here the, the, the yeah. You're already advice. mentioning the first interesting use cases. And just to follow up, what do you think would happen if you wouldn't apply AI and data science to your to Raiffeisen? Yeah, in general, to all traditional banks, yeah, which are in the market, if we if we don't apply it, we would uh, I would say uh, lag behind. Yeah, also means uh, that the fintechs will take over. They are operating at the I would say they don't have this legacy, like I mentioned before. They are operating at a much lower uh, cost base. Yeah, so you would go then to Revolut or number twenty six and uh, simply so you pay one third of that oh. you paid before for banking. Okay. And Alexander, maybe I can hand it to you. Um, so you could, could you actually tell us why it's important for banks and what yeah. would happen if they don't apply data science and AI? Yeah, I mean, I would probably extend this to all companies and not just to banks. Um, but I think that customers, especially younger customers, uh, expect that onboarding processes and, and customer journeys are increasingly digital and automated and they are uh, they're not used to anymore to go to a branch and to i don't know wait for for days to to get appointments um so i think when you look at big tech companies and what is happening in other sectors like I don't know, amazon retail uh, everyone has a, a completely digital um, customer experience with automated recommendations and everything and, and, and people, I think, uh, more and more will, will expect that even in the future. And uh, like if I talk to my students at VU, uh, so I teach a course there on FinTech at the and everything, and I think 50% of the ideas are robo-advisory and automatic investment. And uh, it's just something that, that customers want and they will require from their bank. And if traditional banks don't offer it, uh, they will go to the two that uh, Georg just mentioned before uh, that have it and that have built it from, from scratch. And uh, I mean, I guess there are still people that are used to the uh, old kind of finance. Uh, and, and then depending on what kind of products we are talking about, like if someone wants to take out a loan to buy a house uh, or, or uh, some real estate, then it will probably be different. Uh, but uh, so I guess people just expect that also banks offer digital products that are based on data science and, and all that kind of stuff. So you also expect, so the market is actually expecting banks to have yeah, this think, digital yeah, experience. I think on, on, on the client side, yes, but also in back office processes, I think uh, it, it's important to have good data and to have a good understanding of your data. Um, so for risk management and process optimization, whatever. So I think it's several different uh, parts of the value chain of banks where data science will play a, an, an increasingly important role. Yeah. And again, the follow-up question, what would happen if a bank wouldn't apply data science and AI and just continue operation, operations as is, in your opinion? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, unless you're a bank that caters to old and wealthy clients, uh, you, you will probably lose business to other competitors that that offer the services. I mean, it's and what kind of business would you lose then, in your opinion? So this question goes to you both. Is it which parts of the business are most affected by data science and AI? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean because we already have robo advisory and robo bankers in the title. Um, I think investment on, on on smaller scale will probably be lost. Uh, I don't know, like uh, simple bank accounts, but I mean, that's not sure if that's basically uh, related to AI or if that's just digitalization. Um, because I mean, a lot what what Revolut and N26 do is, is not necessarily AI, but just have a, a completely digital and, and seamless online experience. Um, so, yeah. 
maybe also to Georg, what kind of businesses are, are most affected by this change or? <laughs> there are all kinds of business areas are affected, in fact. Yeah. I mean, uh, retail is uh, clear. I think uh, for everybody of us, we can uh, understand it and we know uh, how this digitalization works. Yeah. But also, let's say, considering uh, on, on the financing side, the markets, um, Alexander mentioned it, like this robo-advisor, automated advising. I mean, here, this is, a, this is a huge market, which the big players like Goldman Sachs, whomever, have invested a lot. Yeah, we are here a niche players, but still what we have seen with data science and use cases, um, there are still a few nice niches where with uh, automated uh, model, you can uh, create here a lot. Yeah? Uh, then also going, going further, for example, on the, on the parts of, of operations. Yeah? Um, here, like uh, optimizing the flows, how an ATM is, for example, filled. Yeah? This, this whole cash in transit uh, optimization, this is a, is a huge market or it's a huge uh, potential uh, that uh, you make sure that there's not too less or too much money in an ATM, yeah? or considering the whole area of compliance and fraud, um, this is a, is a huge, uh, I would say, area on how to optimize everything which is uh, related to, to compliance and, and fraud. Yeah? So here, this uh, goes a lot into the direction of yeah, optimizing internal processes, making it faster, and uh, uh, thus yeah, um, focus more on the customer at the end. And I mean, just you already mentioned a few interesting use cases like uh, investing or like robo advisory, like um, chatbots, like also fraud detection. Um, so, and also what I heard is that you want to optimize uh, the current processes so that they can be autom uh, so automated so that um, they might get cheaper or, uh, but can you think also of use cases which are completely new, which a bank couldn't offer before the, before applying data science and AI? Is it from the top of your mind? So this goes to both of you. Is there some- I would say approaching new markets with the help of data science is uh, uh, much, much easier. Yeah? So you can now, let's say, for credit ratings, use uh, public data. And uh, uh, in former times, it was, I would say, very hard and complicated to enter a, a new country. Now, with the help of, uh, let's say, advanced modeling and help of open data, you are already operating at, a, I would say, more uh, with more knowledge about, about this market. So here, opening up, um, um, new markets, this is with the help for sure. Yeah? And on the other hand, uh, also it is about, uh, I mean, it still goes into this direction of advising, yeah, but uh, optimizing uh, uh, the finances of, of people. Yeah? Here, like uh, uh, in former times, and, and, and it will go into this direction, yeah, that the banks who offer here, I would say, the best advice to the customers will uh, get here. Uh, I would say more and more customers. Yeah? So like optimizing your finances, optimizing your finances automatically, giving you the proper recommendations, uh, um, helping you to keep the budget and so on. Um, this all opens, I would say, new market areas which were, which were not here before. Yeah? Where in former times, you maybe had to go to your private banker where you invested, I don't know, your four, five, six million euros. And now with the help of data science and AI, uh, this, this investment uh, support yeah, and this recommendation uh, gets applicable for everyone. And this is a, a big, I would say, market yeah, and a big enabler. So that's like a democrat democratization of um, maybe higher end services, which are now also possible for us as well. No. <laughs> <laughs> for the, yeah, for the crowd. So, Alexander, do you... Yeah, I mean, maybe... I mean, I guess that many of the... the Could of you the, maybe speak a bit louder or okay. I'm I'll not sure. my microphone closer. Um, yeah, I mean, many of the products we mentioned before, I guess, are, uh, are new in the sense that in, in this digital and uh, automatic uh, process, it wasn't possible with AI and, and, and without data analysis. Maybe a bit um, I mean, nearer we, we to the mic. Basically, it's incredible. I would 
also add uh, uh, retail financing and stuff like this as, as something that can be done in an automatic process in a new way and then which used to be uh, different before. Um, but um, yes, I mean, I guess that the only thing in addition that comes to my mind is what, what you mentioned before is that maybe some investment opportunities that before only existed for really wealthy and rich clients trickled down to, uh, to people with, with less uh, wealth. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and also maybe a, just a question also for your side. So regarding Thinkredible, maybe for also the audience, you're analyzing transaction data and then score customers how credit worthy they are. Right. Yeah, so we, we basically take uh, uh, bank account data um, and uh, try to infer credit worthiness from that and, and offer this at the moment for uh, um, rental contracts to, to some extent and also for e-commerce businesses. Um, but in general, we're in the business of, of developing rating models on, on bank transaction data. Okay, and this wasn't possible before, again, it's like well, it um, depends on how you view it. I mean, for us, uh, basically, PSD2 regulation makes it possible to access data. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, before, uh, I guess it was also possible to uh, get a, a credit risk assessment. Uh, I mean, our strategic investor, KSV, has been around for 150 years now. Maybe, um, again, could you go a bit or, nearer to the mic? Uh, I mean, our, our partner and, and yeah, much better. Thank KSV you. has been around for 150 years doing credit risk assessments. Um, so I guess it was before. So I guess it's just a question of uh, what kind of data you have available and, and, and how digital and fast the process can be. Okay. So that's really the process is again optimized and more scalable. So maybe um, could we move on to the next topic, which is bank versus tech companies. So regarding the skill set needed for uh, the banker or actually the data scientists in banks, um, you also, banks are also starting to adapt more to a tech company uh, culture. And in a way, uh, do you think that data science as such has already arrived at banks? Is, will it become more um, I don't know, more of it, because nowadays it's more maybe separated in a different um, department, but uh, will it be more general or more general, or will banks be more tech driven? So where, and where are, are we in the process? Is it right at the beginning, in the middle? Are we there yet? So maybe Georg. What's your opinion? Yeah, um, if we are investing, I would say uh, quite a lot in this in this topic. Um, I mean, we are somehow like a, a, a small tech company uh, compared. I mean, we have, uh, I would say, two parts. Yeah, one part is uh, we call this the advanced analytics and AI tribe. Yeah, which is the I would say where we have the data scientists, which are uh, on the top notch. Yeah. Of the of the knowledge, yeah, but this is a very small group. Um, on the other hand, we also want to, or we currently roll out the, we call it the citizen data scientist, uh, um, yeah, training pass. We want where we want to democratize um, everything which is um, um, related to data. Yeah, so means uh, if you are let's say a data scientist, yeah, working in the tribe, yeah, you're the expert in in I would say programming, the banking domain and so on. Yeah. Um, but if you work, let's say in a business department and uh, you also want to apply simpler models, then uh, you go into this direction of the uh, citizen uh, data scientist. Yeah, where we, uh, I would say enable for the uh, broader audience, um, I would say tools and the learning paths so that you can yeah, work and model with your data. Yeah. Why? because um, it's important to react the fast. Yeah? I mean, they are not always uh, uh, the big use cases, 
um, which are, are waiting. There are often also a smaller optimization problems for which you don't need to go now to a fully fledged uh, a data science with process and, and uh, a lot of, I would say, uh, things around. Yeah? If you have, a, let's say, a small optimization problem, then uh, with this uh, citizen data scientist track, um, you can yeah, immediately do and, and apply data science, yeah, independent of your, let's say, background or department or, or business area where you are working on. Yeah. And uh, for also this... regarding, sorry, regarding the data science journey Raiweisen is doing right now, where do you stand right now? So from zero to 100, where 100 is actually you've adopted data science in all its flavors and zero is nothing where do you stand in your opinion or where are you <laughs> the ambition level is to go to let's say 200 the stage 100 <laughs> 200 yeah for sure but uh, honestly i would say we are so far that we have recognized that we do to less and that's why we invest here a lot in this uh, uh, a citizen data scientist uh, a track yeah, in order to enable it uh, for the for the broader masses. Yeah? I mean, the the biggest challenges are always yeah, deployment of the use cases, running it in uh, production, making it stable. I mean, there are uh, a lot of of challenges ahead. Um, but yeah, we know what we need to do, and I think this is a a big step already forward that there is the necessary awareness created in in RBI. But so, if you would ask me for a number, I can't, I can't give it to you. Yeah. No number. Okay. Something <laughs> in between, maybe. <laughs> in between. Uh, somewhere between or zero below and 50. Uh, below 50, for sure <laughs> below 50. Yeah. Okay. So Alexander, maybe as a co-founder of a fintech, could you explain to me what are the cultural differences in your fintech compared to maybe a big commercial bank? And... What are maybe the, also the advantages and disadvantages of being a fintech? That's a good, I mean, I think the cultural difference is that we are a small startup and we are a, a small team. So I think the whole uh, work environment is uh, quite different probably to a large uh, commercial bank. Um, also the, the kind of, uh, of topics that we are working on and the individual roles that everyone has uh, probably is is, uh, is 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 broader in the fintech just because everyone cannot be so, so specialized as if you're in a large bank and you're uh, in a specific team with a specific role. Um, so I think from that it's uh, a completely uh, different di different culture. So are you agile? <laughs> <laughs> we want to be. <laughs> We have a certification. I guess, depends, <laughs> I guess that depends on your definition of agile. Okay, but in a, you say you've, you're more the generalist, so every maybe all, all I mean, the maybe team members have... need to know more, need to know more stuff or stuff from different parts of the company. I mean, at least in the beginning, right? So I mean, it changes over time. So the bigger the team grows, the more specialized the roles get. Um, but I guess in, 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 in general, my view, but I've, to, to be honest, I've never worked in a bank. Um, so maybe my impression is wrong, but uh, I guess in some sense you are, you, you are right because I mean, we are a, a, a team of, of 10 to 15 people and you know, when things need to get done, then they need to get done and, and uh, then they're uh, basically done by the person that, that fits the job closest and, and, and has time available. And well, I mean, that a also founder, sounds a bit like working. banks. <laughs> 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 no, just joking. Um, okay. And do you think it's, you have, what are the main advantages you have as a fintech? As a fintech, I think that we are basically designing our products in a, in a new way from scratch. Um, so I think compared to a, a large bank, which I would, I mean, I would also call a tech company. So if you look at an income statement of a bank, then expenditure on tech is, is quite substantial and quite enormous. But I think our main advantage is that uh, we don't have legacy systems that we have to deal with. We don't have uh, banking systems in place where we have to interact with and, and, and connect to. Um, and regulators, maybe. Sorry? 
and regulators maybe well i mean that that i would disagree so i mean it's uh, also account okay. information services are regulated and, and, and data protection law is also uh everywhere um but I mean, basically, we have a, a product in mind and we try to build it uh, and deliver it to our customers. And we, uh, as we build everything from scratch, I think we are much more agile in what we can do and the way we implement it. So, Georg, maybe also the question to your side. What are the advantages of a big commercial bank compared to fintech? So first, let me say for us, uh, fintechs are a very important. I mean, uh, our fintechs are our partners uh, because uh, we also can't invent the wheel, let's say, if it's already invented by a fintech. Yeah? So here, the cooperation with, with fintechs is uh, a crucial. Yeah? Um, what, what is then, I would say, different uh, for us? Yeah, with a fintech, you have, I would say, to specialize in some kind of an, of an area because at the end, you want to I sell here, uh, let's say, a product or a service. Um, on the other hand, if you work in a bank like we are in an agile, adaptive, all the passwords said, yeah, uh, a tribe, um, we have, <laughs> we have, uh, I would say, as an employee, you have here all the opportunities. Yeah? So you can, uh, on the one hand, uh, work for, let's say, retail, and on the next use case, you work for let's say, markets and investment use case. So here, um, I would say, um, if you are working in an area like us, in a, I would say, a very agile and adaptive uh, driven area, you can um, always uh, uh, reach these, these, these areas yeah, and uh, can get here a broad, I would say, knowledge of the bank. Yeah? You I see mean, the on the other hand, or... you, see, yeah, you see for sure the bigger picture over time. So, I mean, it's at the beginning, I would say, overwhelming for sure. But uh, the more you, I would say, stay with a bank, the more uh, suddenly uh, you will start to understand how this is uh, uh, working here. Yeah? I mean, on the other hand, I must also say in a bank, yeah, you will always have uh, some kind of, of politics yeah, or, or in any large corporation. Yeah? In, a, in a, any large corporation, you will always have some influences uh, um, yeah, they suddenly appear within this corporation. That's maybe in a in a smaller fintech not uh, happening to this extent. Uh, but uh, um, nevertheless, uh, I would say I, I could by myself never have imagined imagined to work uh, for a bank yeah, and for work as long as I work. Uh, if you would have asked me ten years ago, but um, yeah, um, I would say working in an area like advanced analytics offers you yeah, to see and, and uh, exchange uh, your point of view within the bank and you see a lot at the end. Yeah. Maybe picking up the, the, the topic of never have imagined, imagined uh, working at the bank. Um, so <laughs> regarding the skill set needed or if you approach um, aspiring data scientists who want to, who is searching for jobs or uh, on the job market. So how so what do you have to offer? Or I don't know if they maybe also come to, I would have never imagined to, to work at the bank. So what are the, so what are the skill sets maybe needed, but also the offerings from your side? Uh -huh. well, yeah, the skill set, um, I would say working as a, as a data scientist, for sure you need to be uh, a fit in data science. Um, and uh, if you work like in our area, uh, what's important also is uh, to have a domain knowledge. Yeah? I mean, but that's also, I would say, applicable to every data scientist. Yeah? Even if you do, let's say, predictive machine maintenance, you need to understand how this uh, machine works. Yeah? The same uh, goes with... Uh, with uh, being a data scientist within a financial institution. Yeah? You also need to understand the business area, what are the, the main drivers, where do they make the profits with, yeah? where do, do they make maybe the losses, what are the biggest uh, cost drivers. So here you need to understand uh, this business. Yeah? And uh, I would say what's very Regarding important... Regarding the skill set, is there some specifics or with the advent of data science and AI, are there some specific new skill sets now required from your, in your opinion? Renaya, do you mean in terms of, let's say, uh, knowledge about models or knowledge about... Yeah, uh, something like that. 
So has the skill would, set needed for a banker of tomorrow changed? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, biggest, biggest topic is here, uh, this, this business understanding. Also, I would say, uh, being, um, uh, having this business analysis and knowledge yeah, that you can, let's say, interact with your counterparts, yeah, that you can, um, um, understand what is the real business need. This is, a um, a big soft factor that's, uh, important. And on the other hand, I would say programming, you need, uh, as a data scientist, uh, uh, you need to know uh, programming, Python, or R, um, and here have a broad knowledge to uh, apply this. Yeah? And especially then also, uh, I would say, considering deployment and productionalization of, of the models here, I would say also non-functional requirements like testing, interoperability, and so on. Um, you. I would say as a data scientist need to have at least a, a basic knowledge about this. I mean, we have also, I would say, as we see that we get here more professional, we have a, a split up the various roles that we see. We have on the one hand, uh, the data scientists who are, I would say the experts for modeling who apply the statistical uh, methods. And then we have uh, in addition a role, this is the machine learning engineer. These are the experts who know how to bring this, this model and code into uh, a format that it can be deployed, that it can be uh, put into a production, that it fulfills non-functional requirements in terms of having a, a quality that it also can be used in a live uh, system because I mean, um, there are cases when our model doesn't work, yeah, the bank will uh, lose a lot of money or will uh, get a lot of angry customers because, yeah, mm -hmm. there's an operative system okay, uh, depending on it. As I understand, there's also this kind of separation between machine learning engineer and data scientist. So people who maybe work more with the code and systems and people who work more on models. Maybe I also would like to hand the question now to Alexander, who, um, because you're also assistant professor at VU, at, used and to used to be. And um, so regarding the students who will be the bankers of tomorrow, some of them for sure. Um, so what are the skills you're teaching them and what do you think is the most important skill? I mean, I guess I basically agree with what, what Georg said. So I think there needs to be a, a, a solid technical and, and methodological foundation. Um, so, I mean, if you're not good at, at working with data and, and programming, whether it's Python or R or whatever language you prefer, um, I mean, if you're not good at that, then it's probably uh, you, you will not be a good data scientist. Um, but what I would definitely uh, add uh, at least for uh, part of the team is to have a domain knowledge because I mean otherwise uh, you run the risk of building models that you don't understand and where you don't have an idea whether the model that you get makes any sense um, and I think that's really a, a, a challenge to understand what the, what the requirements are and, and, and what the data means and, and, and whether the models that you uh, get out of that make, make sense. And, and uh -huh. so I think the important part for the data scientist is that uh, you have an understanding of what kind of data you are working on, from which business process it comes from, what it means, and, and what you would uh, expect from an economical point of view uh, that, uh, that the model should, should deliver. Uh -huh. and I think, think this has... Uh, so, sorry to interrupt. I think this has changed the most in the last uh, two years. Yeah, I would say two or three years ago, it was uh, important just, let's say, to put the data scientist to a team somewhere, said, here's the data, here's the, uh, let's say, this is what we want to achieve. Yeah, create a model. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. And come back in, let's say, two months. Yeah, and now uh, what we here really see is this uh, specialization that we say you have on the one hand, uh, I would say, data scientists who are focusing on this area and or or other areas because here, as a data scientist, you need at the end to talk with the business. You need to talk with their in their language, and this means you need to have this uh, domain knowledge. Yeah, and maybe and, and, also. And I mean, I get. Sorry, and, and, and I mean, then you have this separation that Georg already mentioned that basically you have people that are more on the research side that try to extract information from data and, and, and get interesting results. 
uh, and, and people that implement production systems. So at least at our company, uh, that's okay. two completely different skill sets because if you want something in production that works 24 seven, uh, then it needs to run and it needs to run smoothly and then it needs to be uh, deployed efficiently and all that kind of stuff might not be necessary if you, your job basically is to crunch numbers and then derive insights from data that you basically end up putting in a report and then presenting to someone. Uh, so I think if you want to be in that part that you're actually responsible for uh, implementing uh, data science driven models and products, then you need a, a, a skill set that's way more in the software engineering and, and, and that kind of area. So maybe, maybe we come to the last question now um, for our panel today. Um, so data science at banking is maybe quite specific because there's lots of regulations involved. And also the question is uh, for data scientists, what kind of models can then actually be applied to production? Or maybe also I cannot apply any kind of model for credit scoring. And so what's your opinion on that? Do you think that kind of situation will change or there will come more degrees of freedom or also more regulation for the model side? What do you think? How will this develop? Maybe Georg. Yeah. Well, the regulations are coming. There's this EU regulation on artificial intelligence, which is uh, currently uh, discussed. Yeah, But um, I would say what's important and what will also change is uh, to do, I call it ethical modeling means uh, uh, we don't want to, well, we don't do it, yeah? we don't uh, want to spy on people, yeah, we don't want also to train models with, uh, let's say, uh, real customer data because I think nobody wants yeah, that, uh, uh, um, um, I don't know, his, his or her uh, financial data is used in, in, in training of uh, uh, some kind of, uh, of a model, yeah, I think also, and it doesn't make sense. Yeah? We should not play around here uh, with customer data. I mean, this is a very sensitive data, and here we have to, uh, I would say, do this in an, in an ethical, correct way, yeah, so, um, yeah, that we don't uh, uh, make here any, uh, that we don't play with this kind of data. I think this is, this is really not fair and, and should also uh, not be done, yeah, and, yeah, this leads then to all these kind of regulations, which anyhow, yeah, like this, um, 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 from the European Union regarding artificial intelligence, this regulation all goes into this, yeah. Don't use your, let's say, customer data uh, to, to train an AI. Don't use your customer, let's say, uh, I don't know, photos or something to train something. This, this, this must not happen. And uh, uh, this is also, I would say, a, a big change uh, uh, for the future that here really standards are applied, yeah, which you have to fulfill from the regulator. But anyhow, we don't do this, so uh, it's not an issue for us. So maybe Alexander, what's your opinion? We also have an approach that we basically do ethical stuff that we uh, would uh, appreciate if we were our own customers. Um, so from that perspective, uh, we, we also don't really have a, a, a big issue on that side. And I think if you, uh, if you follow a direction like this, then, then the, the regulation is, uh, is, is, is on your side and, and do you exclude the gender that, from the data set? Sorry? The gender, do you exclude it from the data set actually? Yeah. Or is this the, because I don't know about the regulation, but um, what kind of data needs to be ex excluded then? For you mean for credit scoring or what do you mean? It depends on the- For credit on scoring, the UK. for example. Okay. Yep. So, well, as far as I know, our models uh, uh, for uh, scorecards and going into this direction, they don't apply, uh, let's say, any any gender information. Yeah? I mean, other information like, let's say, age or something like this is put into uh, clusters or bins, um, but uh, we don't use here any, uh, anything in terms of uh, um, gender or uh, any kind of orientation. Um, it's not applied. And I think the same also goes with, with the fintechs and also 
uh, with Alexander. Yeah, I mean, we, we don't even collect the gender from our customers. So. Okay. There is no way. Gary, last question. Just quick and short, <laughs> yes, no. Do you pay with cash or card? Okay, a card for sure. <laughs> okay, a and card, Alexander? Mostly. Card, card no. okay. And you're good with it. Okay, cool. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Me too. Um, so let's come to the Q&A session. Um, we have a few questions. One is uh, from anonymous attendee. Hello, thank you for sharing the experience. Can you please mention any other use cases of AI in the banking sector besides chatbots? You mentioned already a few, maybe oh. some more. Oh, what, what, what do you want to hear? I mean, a lot goes into this direction of automation of processes and here argumenting, I would say, um, everything which is about uh, uh, human interaction, which goes into the part of, of text recognition. So here, let's say, uh, from uh, uh, public authorities uh, to uh, take these uh, Bescheide, uh, for example, so their statements and use this in order to make sure that uh, a mortgage has been correctly entered in the in the cadastre, yeah, one one case, yeah. A, a lot also goes into this uh, a CRM, uh, so that uh, we want to find out if customers maybe gonna churn or if there are, uh, let's say, some some life events. So you retire. This then maybe brings you into another, um, um, let's say, area of of a customer segment. Yeah, um, a lot also goes, I would say, on the non-retail side into this uh, a proper customer. Uh, visit preparation. So imagine if uh, one of the account officers goes to, let's say, OMV or any other large corporate, this, this account officer must be perfectly um, um, prepared. So here, knowing everything, let's say, um, that uh, uh, happened around this company, having here a, a one pager that the account officer is, is perfectly briefed. Uh, this is a is a big uh, uh, use case. Yeah. Um, also, a lot uh, now with with COVID uh, situation goes into these early warning systems. Uh, so here also to to recognize when let's say customers get in financial difficulties and uh, proactively then uh, contact customers to offer here um, 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 services. Yeah. But this is more for the for the uh, corporate clients. As well, yeah, a lot in fraud and compliance, a lot in uh, yeah, um, anomaly detection. So, yeah, a lot of okay. use Lots cases. Of we things. have a broad area, we I can confuse you perfectly with <laughs> everything that we do here. Yeah. <laughs> cool, perfect. So, maybe a question to Alexander. So, again, the great preferences of programming languages, which programming? knowledge would you describe as the chief programming knowledge in the banking sector chief programming knowledge i'm not what sure is, if it's the exactly? programming language or yeah i mean the pro programming language i think it depends so i mean i i basically grew up with r so i have a preference towards r uh now in production we are more working with python um, so basically, I'm, I'm, I guess it depends on your use case. And, and today, today in the morning, we also heard about Julia. So yeah, and whatever else might come. Um, maybe a question to Alex, how hesitant are banks to utilize cloud offerings? Is everything in-house? What is the typical data infrastructure, relational databases, data warehouse, data lake? <laughs> in one for sentence, for, please. For a bank. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your stance on cloud offerings and data um, databases? Well, I, mean, I, I think that, that cloud offerings are also something that banks are moving to, but uh, I would maybe pass that question on to, to Georg, I guess he has more uh, in, insights on, on, on what banks are actually doing. So I mean, I as a, as a fintech startup, I have nothing against uh, cloud infrastructure. 
Naja, we invest a lot to make a cloud uh, secure, also to make sure that not uh, any customer data uh, also is uh, under danger. Yeah, I consider Safe Harbor Act and this Privacy Shield uh, topic, for example, which happened now. Yeah, but uh, cloud, so we are investing a lot in cloud, also like. Uh, I would say a lot of other big, uh, uh, large corporations. I mean, cloud really helped us to uh, uh, speed up in general with the IT infrastructure. Yeah? So things like, uh, or issues like before where you had slow, uh, let's say server farms or where connections were slow. I, I really see uh, with, with uh, this adoption towards cloud that uh, we became here much quicker and faster uh, to response, yeah. So there is not anymore a large uh, uh, server farm to handle, which anyhow, um, also we are not uh, a big player like Amazon or Microsoft that we can do this in the same uh, service quality and offering like the big players are doing. So for us, um, yeah, it is a big, uh, big enabler. Yeah? And if you ask about databases, I would say the direction goes away from uh, relational uh, databases like uh, Oracle, Teradata, uh, and, and others which are out there. I mean, for everything which is about regulations, we use a lot of, uh, so sending data to regulators, we use a lot of relational database systems. Everything which is uh, set up new here, uh, we go into a direction of data lake and are going away from this, I would say, fixed uh, uh, relational approach and become here more more dynamic, yeah? because um, also uh, just a word about relational databases. Yeah, when you have to change a table, and then uh, I don't know, twenty systems are, are behind, dependent on on this table, then interfaces crash and so on. And this is uh, yeah, quite a big big topic and makes us slow and uh, um, yeah not not agile enough or not adaptive enough. That's why with adoption of cloud, with adoption of data lake, um, here we we are much quicker and uh, yeah, faster to react on changes. Okay, thank you. So cloud is there and data science or data infrastructure is more diverse than just relational databases. Um, I also have a last, que very last question, promised. Um, it's a bit a lengthy one. I'm not sure if we can cover it completely, but with non-performing assets being frequently a major problem for the banking sector, equally with problems of asset reconstructions, uh, I had the question, in your opinion, how much is the current level of data science in, bank in the banking sector equipped to solve this area? of non-performing assets? Well, it depends on uh, what is the, is the state. Now, is the customer in a workout state or is it just that some, let's say, warning signs have uh, um, appeared? I mean, on the one hand, uh, there is a model. Is there some data, is, yes or no? Is there some data science involved right now in this kind of reconstruction? Yes, for sure. For yes. Sure. Okay. Okay. And I think we will leave um, since the time is already, we are getting closer to the next panel. Uh, is already over. Please, if you have any more questions, send them directly to Georg or Alexander or also via our DSC Austria at DataSci conference email address and we will just forward it. Um, thank you so much for participating uh, during this panel. Thanks to Georg and to Alexander for being also for joining so quick on <laughs> short notice. And um, yes, I hope we can discuss those topics maybe more in depth and in person soon. And um, in the meantime, I would like to also announce the next topic, which is, wait a sec, too many, too many windows open. Uh, may AI be profitable and ethical at the same time by Martin Mössler and uh, Craig Matthews.